Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Reality is finally beginning to bite. It will still, of course, be denied in some quarters, but thanks to the revelations regarding Cambridge Analytica and the brainwashing of huge swathes of the population, we now have a better understanding of how reality can be denied in the face of what the rest of us would consider to be incontrovertible evidence. Also in the program today, the television star who... Um, I, I find these stories weird. Right? It, it, there's a television presenter in the news quite prominently because she uh, walks around her house naked in front of her children, uh, even though her sons have now reached their teens. Is this the only country in the world where this would be considered to be uh, newsworthy or even vaguely... Controversial's not quite the right word. What's the word when you can have a debate about something? I know, debatable. Is this the only country in the world where such conduct could be in any way debatable? We'll find out later and we'll also get to the bottom-ish of that Cambridge Analytica tale. But we begin, as I love to do, with Brexit. Um, and the... Here's my, well, if I give you my analysis, and then we'll try and work out what question to ask, and then we can um, start lobbing bananas at each other. Uh, the way I see it is this. You, you may have heard the, the, the phrase cautious optimism coming from the rational corners of the country today. The reason for that is it does look as if the absolute nut jobs have been prevented from grabbing the steering wheel. This is why, and I know a lot of you find it rather hard to swallow, this is why I have, on occasion... Do you know, what is it, five after ten? I don't know what blue touch paper I'm going to light first at the moment on the programme. I've, I've experienced in recent days the full fury of Jeremy Corbyn's more devoted support. Dare to suggest to them that his belief that we should send a sample of this nerve agent to Russia and ask them if they did it or not is not only ludicrous but also dangerous. Dare to suggest that and you will be hauled over the hottest of social media coals. Yesterday, the, the attempt, largely in vain, to bring some form of uh, calmness to the conversation about transgender women and um, female changing rooms, my belief being at the outset that if you are in possession of a full meat and two veg, then you really don't have any business being in a room that is um, exclusively for the use of women, and that holds until I speak to a trans woman, at which case I get confused again. But that's not good enough. You've got to be 100% on one side or the other other of that debate otherwise you are the enemy and you deserve to be destroyed uh, and then you move on to the Cambridge Analytica story which means we have to some point at some point today we have to find a way of asking how could you have been so gullible and we need lots of people to ring in and admit that they've been gullible despite the fact that their entire Facebook feed has been dedicated to two years to persuading them that they're not gullible at all they are um, living in a country with no go zones and rampant Sharia law and refugees queuing up at their own back door I am relieved by the Cambridge Analytica story. Um, that may be an odd word to reach your ears, but I am profoundly relieved. In many ways, it's restored my faith in humankind because, of course, we're susceptible to manipulation and propaganda. This wasn't invented in the 1930s. It was, in some ways, mastered. But to see and to hear the people responsible for using Facebook to manipulate and brainwash you has actually made me think more warmly of you. You see what I mean about the difference between the people selling snake oil and the poor saps swallowing it on a daily basis and an industrial scale. So we've got to find a way into that story later in the programme. So I don't know which blue touch paper is going to ignite first. But oddly, apart from full-on unicornists, full-on denialists, I think we can have quite a calm conversation today about Brexit because I suspect everyone's unhappy, except people like me whose unhappiness is moderated by relief that the absolute unicornists are not going to be, it would appear they're not going to be able to grab the steering wheel. You know this um, ERG group that Jacob Rees-Mogg heads up, uh, their the WhatsApp exchange, which for me distilled the whole of Brexit. 
when uh, Nadine Dorries went on it to ask if someone could explain to her what the customs union was because she was having lots of debates with people about why we had to leave it and she'd realised she didn't really have any clue what it was. So someone explained to her what the customs union was and she said, well, it's very hard to understand. I, I, I was definitely right to be opposed to it in the first place. So Brexit, in many ways, if you see it through the eyes of an MP, don't laugh, Boris Johnson's foreign secretary, but if you see it through the eyes of an MP like Nadine Dorries, the reason why we're leaving the European Union is because she's too dumb to understand how it works. Just let that hang. Like the smell of fish, because that's where we are today. God, I, I derive no pleasure from this. This is the Cassandra de nos jours. There will come a day, I said to you about 18 months ago, when all they've got left is fish. Well, that day has turned out to be March the 20th, 2018. Fish. It's all that's left. Got the passports. Didn't need to leave the European Union to change the colour of them, if you really believe that the colour of your passport somehow imbues it with some spiritual power that was lacking when it was maroon. You've already got it. St you're still angry, and you're still ignorant, and now it's fish. Fish! Fish. It's all about the fish. I don't really understand it, and I'm enthralled to a man who was actually on the, uh, the committee, the fisheries committee at the European Parliament, and, and didn't bother going to any meetings. It was about one out of 23, was it, or something like that? But yeah, listen to them. They know what they're talking about. They understand the fish. So it's finally happened. All that's left is the fish. People like me feeling a modicum of relief that the absolute headbangers, the fully paid up unicornists, haven't been able to grab the steering wheel. But of course, we'd rather they weren't in the car at all. We'd rather that they hadn't programmed the sat nav. They'd rather that they hadn't taken 52% of a uh, of a vote and used it to pretend that everybody knew all along they were voting for economic oblivion and a sort of xenophobic exceptionalist um, Shangri-La. So. When you hear people say they're cautiously optimistic, what they mean is, thank God we haven't chopped off both our legs. But we're still going to have to hop around for the next several generations. Ten minutes after ten is the time. 0345 606 That's a mark of how mad the coverage has been, isn't it? In the, in the sensible people, rational evidence-based people now are just relieved that we're going to have one leg left. We've, we've moved on. This is the curse of the liberal, the curse of the open mind. We've moved on from desperately hoping that the rest of the body would come to its senses and not chop off our left leg. We've moved on from that. We've almost given up on hoping to hang on to our left leg. We're just worried about chopping off the right leg as well because the emotions and the moods and the movements that persuaded people to chop off our left leg, they're still out there. The unicornists, still shilling. So there's a genuine fear, and this is why, you know, odd though it may sound, this is why I still, in, in the darker moments of the small hours of the morning, when insomnia bites, as it occasionally does, I can still muster up some sympathy for Theresa May. I really can. Because I think, and this is going to be our conversation today, I realise, because I think... This is her plan. I think she just had to try to keep things moving. I think she knows and knew and now knows even more that this is mad. It's insane. But she's also got, and this is where I suspect people like me have been a little slow to understand, she does genuinely believe in this sort of democratic mandate, albeit that nobody who voted to leave the European Union could agree with another person who voted to leave the European Union about what they were actually voting for. When it was rendered binary and bovine, it became binding. I genuinely believe that Theresa May sees her mission and her patriotic duty as keeping the ship afloat after senior members of her own party have done everything they can to hold it below the waterline. She knows it's bonkers, but her job, and I wonder whether anyone else could actually have done it, her job was to keep the unicornists fed, throw them the occasional bone, while getting on with the very tricky business of minimising the damage that we do to ourselves by leaving. And that, I think, is where we come in together today. I I is there any other analysis, if you like, um, that doesn't admit that description? What is the job of Brexit? minimising the damage we've decided to inflict upon ourselves. And in that context, yesterday's announcement was pretty good. We basically backtracked on everything. 
that the Brexiters said we were going to do or be able to achieve, whether it was the rights of EU citizens living and still coming here. Liam Fox, you'll remember, described them as one of our best cards, while also denying, ten minutes later, that they were treating these people cynically and callously. David Davis, who, remember, was going to be in Berlin the morning after the result, negotiating trade deals. Illegally, but hey, he's still Secretary of State for leaving the European Union. The fish thing was never really going to float, if you pardon the pun, for the very simple reason that the trading arrangements that we have with the European Union involve a little bit of give and take. And um, although there is one reading of the fisheries situation which makes an absolute nonsense of uh, a lot of the claims made today, the, the dragnet fishing and the depletion of our stocks playing a bigger part in the decision to start fishing less than anything else. Yeah, yeah, and I could go on. What else have you got? Borders? How we control our borders? We already can. Uh, and by the way, we need workers. Where's that other story from Bloomberg today? Here we go. One in seven EU companies with UK suppliers have moved some of their business out of Britain. Um, this isn't from a, a journalist. It's the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply. Admittedly, it doesn't know as much about procurement and supply as your Facebook feed does, but the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply uh, are, are kind of reliable on issues of procurement and supply. Almost a third of UK businesses with suppliers from the block have increased prices as a result of Britain's vote to leave. Um, this in a report published today and when you read that the pound's gone up and businesses have welcomed what happened yesterday you, you you understand why I'm saying what I'm saying businesses have welcomed what's happened yesterday because we appear to have been served half a cup of cold sick rather than several pints and that now because of what we've allowed people like Boris Johnson and Jacob Rees-Mogg to do to this country that now is good news What's the good news today, Brexiters? We're only going to have to drink half a cup of cold sick, not a whole pint. What's the good news today? Well, it looks like we might keep one leg. We're not actually going to chop off the other one. And then everybody now getting cross about fish! They, they are the people that want to chop off the other leg as well. And the Cambridge Analytica story is amazing, um, focusing mostly still on, on Trump, but it will reach Brexit. It has to, because you, 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 you've listened to this programme. You've heard people ring in and say... I trust YouTube and UKIP and common sense more than I trust, you know, economists, scientists, experts. And you wonder how anyone can get into that point of view. But what the Cambridge Analytica story has given us is the um, irrefutable proof, really, that if your Facebook or your YouTube feed is, is programmed to bombard you with dishonest, scary stories, you will end up in a very, very dark place. Best clip of that from the MD of the company. I'll play to you after this, but I want your phone calls first. 0345 6060 973. Start off with that. Um, are you happy with the way it's going? I, I'm presuming nobody is, but I, I'm happy to hear from people who are. 0345 6060 I, I, I'll park my arrogant observation, despite the fact that it's completely accurate, that I've been telling you for 18 months we were going to end up here today. Just leave me out of it in the first instance and focus instead on the Prime Minister, who I cautiously suggest to you was dealt a hand of cards that you wouldn't wish upon your worst enemy, but at this point in proceedings... Bearing in mind that she's got the unicornists behind her with their daggers unsheathed, their horns sharpened, I think Theresa May has done quite well. 03456060973. Of course, it might be by accident. The Cambridge Analytica thing is going to be tricky because as, as quite a few people are already proving in text and tweets, unintentionally but absolutely incontrovertibly, um, uh, when you point out to people that they have absolutely been brainwashed and misled, they don't thank you for it. They usually double down on the delusion. So I don't know what the next chapter in that story is going to be, but we'll turn our attention to it imminently. Um, Brexit. It's going all right, isn't it? In, in so far as the unicornists and the absolute headbangers, who at one point in the last six months looked like they might actually get their hands on the steering wheel. You remember? Doff cap, tug, tug forelock, vote re-smog. Looks like they've been stuck in the boot now. Thank God. That's my analysis. What's yours? Steve's in Belfast. Steve, what would you like to say? Uh, my Hi, good morning, James. Hello, Steve. Uh, my analysis is uh, the opposite to what you just said. Uh, it certainly is for us here. Um, we are being kicked down the road again. We are going to uh, suffer badly, and we are going to uh, end up 
in a very, very bad place because um, we're just going to continue to use the bar bar as a bargaining tool. We will be used as a stumbling block um, to say we don't accept, we don't accept, we don't accept, and we will end up getting no deal because the EU won't won't uh, put up with that. Uh, and hang on, just 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 end up being kicked out. End up being kicked out of what? Sorry, we will end up being uh, well. We will end up. Uh, seeding from the union for a start, we will end up with uh, being part of the Irish Republic, which uh, I disagree with. Uh, but are you Irish? We, no, I'm not. I mean, okay. I moved over here over here four years ago. Would you and have I'm a not, vote in that referendum? I've, I've sorted up on the Good Friday Agreement in the last couple of months, but I can't remember every codicil and paragraph. Would you have a vote as a resident in a, in a referendum on unification? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. I don't think so because I believe that. Well, I, 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 certainly um, people from uh, the EU didn't have a vote in the EU referendum. No, 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 no. I know, I know that, but I'm talking about the Good so, Friday so, Agreement. So, so, oh, the Good Friday Agreement. Um, that, that, that's that's I, where the that's know. where the dual referendum at any point to, to to unify Ireland would would kick in. It would be the, under the terms of the GFA. So. I mean, would, well, the, the, whether the, I got a vote or not, he's going to. He, he, he I, I was just, just interested um, as, as a political anorak. I just I mean, there's a few things that you've said that confuse me slightly. Um, yep. What were you hoping might happen? Uh, what I would hope it would happen is that the people, that the MPs in London would grow a pair and maybe say this is ridiculous. Uh, we don't need to do this. What? And what Brexit? Least, you mean call the whole thing off? I would like, I would, from a Northern Ireland point of view, I think that we, I can't see a good way that this is going to end. No, but this. you've misunderstood me. And, and I mean, the Irish situation notwithstanding, we will move on to it. My, my point is, of course, we should call the whole thing off. But Theresa May made a political decision with some justification that she couldn't do that. I think probably she could now, but it's, it's, we're too far down the rabbit hole. If you accept that we can't call it all off, and yep. you accept that Ireland is either going to be subject to some sort of miraculous solution to the border problem or going to be the, 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 the grit in the oyster that might do for the whole thing. Today, March the 20th, fish day, as it will be known henceforth, it couldn't really be going any better from the point of view of people who don't want the unicornists to drive us actually over a cliff. But, but, but my my my. my, my but what I think about it is the fact that the, the unicornists can drive us over a cliff because they can use the Irish border question uh, to actually stop progress. And therefore, we can arrive at the point on or the end of uh, uh, in December 2020 right. uh, of having no deal. And therefore, if there's no deal, we end up with hard Brexit. And, and then, then we're all in, well, then we've got no legs. Yeah, and the, and the Irish border is the perfect way of doing it. The DUP so, so at the moment, already. at the moment, they're the ones insisting that it will be possible to come up with a border. That there is the same people who are, who are a bit late delivering the unicorns are going to deliver a technological solution to the Irish border, and then people who've never even dipped a toe into such matters before reference a research paper published by the European Union last year and claim that it's all possible, and then just go a little bit quiet when asked to point to one border in the world that could be a model for what they imagine could happen here. You think they're deliberate? being deceptive. I don't. I, I think they're just dorks. If we've learned anything from the last 18 oh. months, they're just dumb. They're dumbasses who say anything to get to the end of an interview. I, would, I, I wouldn't disagree that, with, with you saying that about the DUP at all. The DUP are a complete bunch of dorks in the same way that um, Sinn Féin uh, uh, sit, sit on their side of the fence and are as hard as they want to be on their side of the fence. But, uh, they, they mirror the DUP. And, that, and, you, and that's where the UK is going with much more going down the DUP route. Yeah, well, you've rained on my parade, Ukraine. which is a slightly unfortunate turn of phrase for a man in Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> you have rained hey, on... It's beautifully sunny here. Oh, it's not the rain. It's not the, the rain, rain, mate, the okay, parade. <laughs> you've rained on my parade because you think that this is just another holding tactic and that the, 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 the apocalypse, which will be Ireland, the apocalypse is um, uh, just even being postponed. If DU, even if the DUP aren't sensible enough to do that, um, the ERG... Um, will go down that route. They will delay and delay and delay. They kick the can, kick the can, kick the can, and eventually say, "No, we don't agree with that." And, and they try and blame it on the EU and say, "We can't, we can't fix this because the EU is being intransigent." I think Rees Mogg said this week, "Well, uh, Ireland will have to leave the customs union and the single market." So slightly overlooking the fact that Ireland has been autonomous since 1916, but the poor fellow overlooks a lot of things. Steve, um, I, I'm not yet going to review my position based upon your pessimism because I am a glass half full remainer. It's only, it's only, it's only, it's only your position as regards if you were living in Northern Ireland. I, no, I, I get that. that. In England, it's probably different. No, well, I mean, you know, you look at my surname. I've got the, the interests of the island 
in my heart, but equally you're right. I can only look at, uh, you know, when you look out of your window, you care more about what you can see than what's on the other side of the sea. 27 minutes after 10 is the time. I've got some fun lines free on this. Um, we can have a scrap if you want, actually. I'm in, in, in a fairly feisty mood, but I don't know what we'd scrap about unless you honestly think it's going well. I'll tell you that the constituency that I will also talk to today, it's all going a little bit rubbish, but at least we're leaving. So it, it, I will reserve the right to ask you what you're actually happy about beyond that, those words, that sort of salad of words. At least we're leaving. What are we leaving and where are we going and what's going to be better tomorrow than it was yesterday? But in terms of Theresa May, if you absolutely step back from the whole thing, which I appreciate is difficult to do, you look at what she had to juggle and deal with and you look at where we are today, it may have happened entirely by accident. She doesn't seem to be what you would call a proactive leader. Words like strong and stable don't fit neatly onto her slogans. But it could have been a hell of a lot worse than this. And short of calling the whole thing off, I don't see how it could have been better. There you go. Genuinely, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. And short of calling the whole thing off, I don't see how it could have been better. Nick's in Brixton. Nick, what would you like to say? Yeah, um, I would like to say that um, I didn't really think much about this uh, situation of Brexit. I didn't really think until I went Fair to enough. the hospital. Yes. And um, there was a guy in the bed next to me, and he's a fully qualified computer engineer. Yeah. He's only been in the country two years, yeah? Yeah. And he had a lot to contribute towards this, um, you know, country, yeah? Yeah. And uh, then they were pressurising him to uh, get the first plane home to Portugal. Well, I haven't got the full details, but there they're, 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 they're should have been good news for him yesterday. Yeah, well, I hope so, you know. And I spoke well, to a woman on the bus yesterday as well. Oh, yeah. And um, she's uh, done a lot of... She was a Spanish woman. She's done a lot of uh, work with charity in this country, yeah? Yeah. And um, they, they, she was under threat of deportation as well. I, I, well, I mean, I know that the Home Office is sending out a lot of letters and a lot of requests anyway. at the moment, but I, 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 and maybe we should speak to one of those dreaded experts, actually, on this, because I haven't fully caught up with what the announcements with regard to EU citizens here and British citizens there, um, what yesterday's announcements mean. I, I think, and I say this very cautiously, Nick, I think it was good news for both of the people you described, the Portuguese person and the and the Spanish lady, but I but I could be wrong. Um, I'll check for you, actually. That's what I'm here for. Oh, three. 4560609973 is the number that you need. I mean it. I'm not I'm not trying to wind you up. I do think Theresa May has done pretty much okay, she's not allowed to call it off and we don't really want to chop off both our legs. She was under instructions from the country to chop off at least one. She felt she had no choice. She couldn't turn around and tell the country what she truly believed, which is of course that this is an act of unconscionable madness. So she couldn't do that. She's kept the unicornists in the back seat. Arguably, she's got them in the boot. And she appears at this point to have prevented us from chopping off our second leg. All roads, sadly, lead to Ireland. Three things I've been telling you for 18 months. Everything will end in Ireland, and there will come a day when all they've got left is passports and fish. I was wrong, because the passports died two months ago. I should have said all they'll have left in the end is fish. It's in the programme, we'll turn our attention to this astonishing story regarding Cambridge Analytica, something that I've kept one eye on, on your, by, on your behalf in the ensuing, in the uh, recent months. But I, I have to tell you, there have been times when I wondered whether it was um, a case of people seeing what they want to see, whether or not things were getting a little exaggerated. Um, I, I think the first indication that it was completely kosher probably came at the Press Awards last year when Carol Cadwallader from The Observer picked up a special investigations award and then that got um, uh, it doubled down on at the Society of Editors Awards last week, despite the fact that an awful lot of energy, expense and effort was put into discrediting her or trying to discredit her. Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, probably is a duck. and. Um, Carol and uh, some other journalists at Channel 4 and elsewhere seem to have now concluded uh, um, fairly comprehensive proof that, that, that it is a duck. Let me, let me play you something, actually, before we dive back into the Brexit conversation. Let me play you something that, that comes from that Channel 4 investigation and features a chap, um, the managing director of Cambridge Analytica, whose name is Mark Turnbull. And uh, what I'm thinking of doing in the next hour, and I might need your help or indeed guidance on this, um, I'm not cocky enough to imagine that people will ring in and tell me that they were duped in this way. I, I don't think yet people are ready to climb out of the rabbit hole 
um, and admit being victims of this con. But I'm thinking that we all know someone who was. And that might be how we do the next hour. I, I have a friend who absolutely went down this rabbit hole, went from being quite an objective and open-minded person to actually buying EDL memorabilia, EDL merchandise, I beg your pardon, on the internet. And when I got to the bottom of why, um, it was because his feeds on Facebook and YouTube, which isn't in the news today, but his feeds on Facebook were bombarding him absolutely, relentlessly with complete hogwash. Same thing happened in America. How you have someone who's never left Texas utterly persuaded that swathes of East London are no-go zones. How have we ended up in that position? And they cast their vote for Donald Trump as a result of that? People in this country who voted to leave the European Union because they were worried about Sharia law taking hold in, I don't know, Bury or Boreham Wood? I mean, madness, right, when you're on the side of the sane, but sympathy deserved for people who've been manipulated and fed by these sort of tactics. The two fundamental human drivers um, uh, when it comes to taking information on board uh, effectively are hopes and fears and many of those are unspoken and even unconscious. You didn't know that was a fear until you saw something that just evoked that reaction from you. Right, right. And our job is to get, is to drop the bucket further down the well than anybody else to understand what are those really deep-seated underlying fears, concerns. There's no good fighting uh, an election campaign on the facts because actually it's all about emotion. There's no point fighting an election campaign on the facts because actually it's all about emotion. How do I excite your emotion? By persuading you that there are people just over the brow of the next hill utterly determined to ravage your reality and indeed um, your livelihood. 10.39 is the time. We'll get stuck into that later in the programme. Back to Brexit and the simple question of who's happy now? 0345 606 0973. And does the fact that none of us are unhappy enough to actually hurl ourselves off a proverbial tower, does that support my suggestion at the moment that Theresa May has done quite well? Possibly by accident, but in terms of keeping the one leg and not letting the unicornists persuade the nation to chop off the other one, I think she's done quite well. Rod's in Cranbrook in Kent. Rod, what would you like to say? Uh, just, just, I was going to talk about fish, but just... Um... Carry on, we need more on fish. <laughs> it is fish day. It's National Fish Day. Well, it's lovely, of course. I'm very <laughs> fond of fish. I'm very fond of fish. What's yeah, your favourite um... fish? Do you have a favourite fish? Yeah, I have lots. And anyone that swims, I think. Mm -hmm. um... OK. <laughs> the, uh, I just... Because I'm very interested by this whipped-up fury about fishermen and our fish, and, our fish yes. uh, and, and all this thing. Um, I just had a look at the government statistics this morning, because I'm pretty ignorant, really. And uh, I just did some calculations. And uh, if, if we take back control, to use that horrible phrase, of our fish, and assuming we can catch all the fish that the EU boats catch at the moment in our waters... The, uh, the total gain is about a billion pounds, which sounds like an awful lot of money. But, of course, in terms of the whole economy, that's peanuts. No, so it's, it's, it's a month's worth of yeah. um, NHS money. Is yeah, it exactly. 250 million or 350 million on the side of the bus? 350. Oh, OK, so it's not even a month's worth. It's a fortnight no, and a bit. No, it's no, fortnight no. and change. So, so it's, 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 it's... I was going to say it's peanuts, so it's not quite right. No, it's not peanuts. What yeah. do you... How, um, what I, what I wanted to say is these poor fishermen, and I do feel, I do understand that they're aggrieved and, 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 uh, and all that because they haven't been protected by our governments at all. No, th th um, this is true. Same with the common agricultural policy. They're the two most obviously improvable areas of our arrangements, our prior arrangements with the European Union. But, but I'm, just, I'm just fearful. Well, I mean, obviously the right thing to do is to cancel Brexit. I'm, I'm right behind that. Of course, that. yes. But, uh, you know, if, if, if to Theresa May, to use your other uh, sort of imagery, is, is going to saw, start sawing the other legs off. The other leg off. Um, it's the fishermen who are going to get sold down the river. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> and the percentage of the fish that's landed on, on British shores that then gets exported to the European Union is fairly well, chilling. A lot of it goes straight 
there. It doesn't even come in through our shores. And they have to process a lot. Most most of it's landed in Scotland, I think, and then yeah, uh, eighty odd percent of that makes its way uh, to the well, export the market. Make, the statistics make good reading, but there are only. According to government statistics, only 11,800 fishermen working in the UK industry. Of, of course, you've got all the ancillary workers. Do, do you know much about the... Not very many. Well, I've just been reading the... No, I know. I, I'm just intrigued. Someone else was educating me earlier on the WWF's role, not 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 the um, World Wrestling Foundation, the World Wildlife Fund. Foundation, yeah. Role in, in stopping dragnet fishing in the well, 80s. Look, and, see, look and see what Iceland's done. Yes. They catch their fish on long lines. So the, the the cut in what we were landing had as much to do with environmental oh, concern. The, I can't remember his name. There's a professor of fisheries in, in Newcastle University, I think. Haddock. Is, professor Haddock. Is, is he really? No. <laughs> It'd be wonderful if he were. Wouldn't it? Uh, uh, um, but uh, but yeah, he's, he was talking about the, the, the control of fish stocks. And, and if you look at the recovery of the cod fishery... Yes. It's it's quite remarkable. And the herring fisheries in recovering. As Here's well. the thing: what you've solved, you've solved it. Here's the thing that happens. So all this stuff about borders, all this stuff about laws, all this stuff about trade, all this stuff about business. That's all been disproved. That's all been undermined. The lies have been unveiled. People can no longer claim that this is feasible or that is feasible. The fact that they can't name any of the so-called benefits they were promised. Though all those ships have sailed. So the only thing you've got left now is the subject that is very emotive. But but utterly misunderstood, and the snake oil salesmen pile in on fish because they know that the average punter living in the middle of the country who hasn't been to the seaside since last summer, and that was in Malaga anyway, is, is you can whip him up in a, in, into a state of righteous fury without demanding that he actually appraise himself of the facts and the information, which yeah, is why and, uh, Fish Day was always going to happen, Rod. Yeah, and the poor, the poor fishermen are going to get sold down the river. There's no doubt. Stop saying sold down the river. It's a rubbish pun. No, did you realise um, that your Christian name was playing a, a nominative? Yeah, I did you, that, you, yeah. you did. Okay. Uh, yeah, there, there's Rod talking yeah, about that. fish. Like Thank fishing, you. Yeah. yeah good can man. Can I just say one other thing? That, oh, yeah, of course you can. You We're all friends here. The, the the Trump election. Yes. Uh, I was actually in New, in New York on the. Uh, uh, on the evening uh, uh, of his election, my, my son was getting married there the next day. So we we were out on Fifth Avenue, um, in that huge protest that went on, and I was very very struck by uh, I'm I'm getting I'm long in the tooth now, yes. but I was very struck at the youth protesting there against. Tr I know you know New York is an anti-Trump city, yes, but gosh, those particularly young ladies were out there, they were absolutely furious at what had happened. Absolutely. I've never, I mean, I've been to one or two demonstrations. I've never been to one where there was well, so much anger. Well, yes, because a self-confessed yeah. sex offender, multiple bankrupt white supremacists had just been elected into the White House. But, of course, what we've learned from the Cambridge Analytica stuff is that it's easy not to notice all that if someone's pouring propaganda into your other ear. You can you can keep your finger in one and, and have the other exclusively available for the pouring of propaganda and snake oil. That's why I mean I'm relieved by the Cambridge Analytica story because it, it means that there wasn't some sort of secret potion that was being served up to people. It was just good, old-fashioned, Joseph Goebbels-style misinformation and propaganda. And the people who could see through it, Rod, would be furious, like, like the people you saw that day. 10.45 is the time. I'm a little wary of the next hour because I, 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 how, you can't get people to admit they've been conned even when the evidence has mounted up to an almost irresistible degree. It's a psychological process. It's a, it's a, you know, a, a phenomenon, a studied psychological phenomenon. It's also why, as I said to you many, many moons ago, that the people who fall for postal scams, the people who fall for those invitations to send twenty thousand pounds to a to a PO box in order to free up the twenty million pounds that your recently deceased distant relative has left in a um, a convenient bank account for you, the people who send off the money are more likely to send more than anybody else. That you're more likely, after you've made that initial decision to send 20 grand to um, <clears throat> Bobby, Bobby Face, you're more likely to send more money. Because think about it as a... It's almost like a gate, isn't it? Once you've opened that gate, to close it again takes a lot more effort than leaving it closed in the first place. So 
That is why I don't think in our examination of the Cambridge Analytica revelations, I don't think many people, if any, will ring me to say, I mean, we've had calls like that in the past, actually. More, more so on the far right stuff than on the Trump or Brexit stuff. And people have said, I always remember one fellow about three years ago whose wife said, if you don't put your laptop away, I'm leaving you. And he said, after three weeks, James, I was back to normal. I'd actually turned into a sort of knuckle-dragging racist lunatic. I was attending EDL marches and online all the time. And my wife said, it's that bloody laptop. Put the laptop away and you'll be fine. Put it away three weeks later. Was it three weeks or three days? Does anyone remember that call? I can't, I can't remember, but he was back to normal. He rang me up to say so. so. So it is perfectly possible to do it, but it's not necessarily easy. So I think in the next hour, I want you to tell me about your friend or family member who you think would be a very good piece of evidence for the Facebook manipulation leading people to very dark and ignorant places. And I stress again, although I'm wasting my breath, I stress again, you can't hate on people for falling victim to something as huge and as powerful as this appears to be. 10.52 is the time. Back to Brexit. Maro is in Cheam. Maro, what would you like to say? James, um, listen, I just spoke, I'm just wanted to say about this EU border and how everything seems to be, you know, based on the EU border. And I wanted to bring to the attention to most people that Cyprus um, is still a divided country because in 1974, Turkish forces invaded... Um, the North is occupied illegally. It's not recognised by the European Union. And yet, when the state of Cyprus joined the EU in the early 90s, we were hoping that they would bring about a solution and get rid of the border and... Yeah, I mean, I'll, take, I'll take your word for it, you but know, from the outside looking in, I don't know how you ever thought that was going to happen. Well... It was it was a long shot. Sure. It was a long well, shot. I suppose if Turkey joined the EU, if Turkey joined the EU eventually, which, despite what people like Boris Johnson said during the referendum campaign, is um, a, a pretty close to impossible. Certainly now we've seen the full nature of Erdogan's authoritarianism. That ain't ever going to happen. Then I could have imagined that the border there would have become invisible. Well, only if they had withdrawn all their troops from Cyprus and allowed... Well, that's why I can't understand how you thought it was ever going to happen. I don't understand how you thought it was ever going to happen. James, we didn't really believe it would happen. Right. But the point is, it, Cyprus is a member state of the European Union and there is a border dividing the free state of Cyprus from the occupied state of Cyprus, yeah, which is occupied <coughs> by Turkish troops. And the EU are able to live with that. So I don't know why they're making such a big issue about a border in Ireland when, you know, it, there's already a divided border in a country. The, yeah, but that's the point, isn't it? You're, you're, what, I mean, unless I've misunderstood you, you you're, you're pointing out that we will have no choice but to have a border in, in Ireland similar to the one in Cyprus. But people now are coming and going quite freely without, you know, there are, there are people that fly on certain budget airlines that fly into Larnaca Airport and then cross over to the occupied area without without there being a big deal on the, on the border that's what I'm saying but, but if it they wanted if they wanted to ship if a lorry full of it, if they wanted to ship a lorry full of olive oil over that border they they'd have to go through rather more rigmarole mm, well, I don't no, know. No, no, well I do well oh, sorry that was my phone buzzing um yeah I my point is that... If well, you're describing border, tourists. Not just tourists, people who live in the occupied areas, people who, you know, people who want to go over for a long weekend, people who go... And what do they have to do at the border? They, they flash their passport sometimes. sometimes and if they've they got don't. goods... If, if they've got goods that fall under customs rules, what do they have to do with those? That's my point. It's, it's become such a joke now. That and, and what happens you know, in Ireland at the moment if you want to cross the border? Now, that I don't know, and I just say to you... Well, the answer is absolutely Alex. nothing, Mauro. Uh, absolutely nothing happens at the border in Ireland. So, I, I mean, with the greatest of love and respect, I, 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 I think you proved precisely the opposite point of the one you rang in to make. But that's OK, because this is fish day, and everything is upside down and turvy topsy. Nicholas is in Plymouth. Uh, it's near the sea. P Nicholas, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello, um, well, I'm... Hi, well, I'm calling as someone who voted Remain, um, but I really have to say, I think 
what you're basically saying is that somehow or other the referendum was illegitimate because no, I'm not. people. Well, OK. Let, let so it's me... completely legitimate. That's why I've concluded yeah, that Theresa May has done quite a good job. Yeah. Can, can you just give me a chance? Well, not, if you say something that's not true, I will correct you. But other, right. but other than that, fill your boots. OK. During the campaign, basically both sides talked rubbish. One side no, said not that true. If, we, if we left, there would be milk and honey. The other side said that if we left, it would be a complete economic disaster. No, I, I need to correct you, though. Some people made predictions yeah. that haven't come true. Some people yeah. issued demonstrable falsehoods yeah. about what we would legally be allowed to do. So when David Davis said, on the morning after the referendum result, we'll be in Berlin, not Brussels, doing a trade agreement, he was either spectacularly ignorant or actually lying. When the government of the Bank of England said, we may have a recession, and then took measures immediately after the referendum, this is what the people who were pouring snake oil into your ears now Ever add so well, those predictions didn't yeah. come true mark carney it's moved not, heaven and earth to stop carney. no because you've already said two things that aren't true so mark carney okay. moved heaven and earth to stop his own predictions from coming true so there's no false equivalence between the two sides nicholas on one side you've got okay. predictions that didn't come true on the other side you've got liars carry on as, as someone who voted remain well, so you keep saying but but that's yeah. the, irrelevant to this conversation okay, okay. um I basically believe that people ignored a lot of what was said on both sides, rightly or wrongly, thinking that it was exaggerated. But what they did understand was the basic point that, on the one hand, the Remain campaign was saying we are going to take an economic hit. Which we have. If we leave. And on the other hand, the Leavers were saying we will be better able to control immigration if we leave. Which wasn't true. Well, immigration was down 90,000 last year, net immigration. And, and, we, and we haven't left, yet. and we haven't and imposed we haven't the EU left. rules that we're allowed to impose. So, so once, once we've left... We will see. Obviously, it will be up to the government to implement policy. No, but again, mate, I'm going to have to correct you because you said an untruth. No. We, we could have right. controlled our borders better if the government had decided that they wanted to. We didn't have to leave the I, European I, I Union. That wasn't the case. I said that, that people had voted on the understanding, and I think... The misunderstanding. The misunderstanding. ...able to control immigration... On the misunderstanding, the Nicholas. ...the European Union. The misunderstanding. No, I don't think it's a uh, misunderstanding, because obviously with free movement, um, you can... Why did you vote Remain, Nicholas? Pardon? Why did you vote Remain? Uh, so I weighed up the... Well, just give me the big one, the big, the big swinging... Decision. Basically, I, I, I felt that um, the economy was more important than immigration. So you believed Project Fear? Um, yes, in effect, I, I believed Project Fear. Um, uh, well, not, not to the extent that Project Fear was suggesting. But, but to I the extent that it we, determined your vote. We, we would have lower economic growth, which I think we are having, than if we'd remained in the European Union. It's not a disaster. We're still growing. Um, uh, we're still in the European Union, and we've moved we've moved from the top of the growth table to the bottom. Yeah, but, but you're, it, it hasn't been. No, any, you, you've forgotten that you, you're defending the Remain vote. You, you, you kind of forgot that that's what you said at the beginning of the call. And on the immigration stuff, with the greatest of love and respect, just just Google it. Google what, what European Union law is with regard to uh, movement of labour. Three months. If you haven't proved that you've either got the capital or a job, then under European Union legislation, you are you could be ordered to leave. Did you know that when you rang in, Nicholas? Yes, I did. Um, and, and yet you still carried on. Uh, yeah, but, hey, that's typical Remain voter, I suppose. It's coming up to 11 o'clock, and uh, if he's a Remain voter, I'm a fish. I am the